Greetings, we are the Boss Prophets and the Generals, Dr. Apostles April and Andrew, and we are here with your weekly supernatural word of empowerment. We decree by the power of God that what you are about to hear will begin to shift you into your new season. Let's listen in closely as the word is already in progress. But you have to choose to ignore devil's pictures of defeat. Begin to focus. I'm giving you strategy now. Begin to focus on God's portrait of prosperity and success. I don't know about you, but I'm a living witness. This is what I do. So let's go ahead and check my successes with your successes. You're doing it your way, and then I'm doing it God's way. Who is measuring up in, in what way? I can tell you my many successes. I can tell you how he's turned some things around for me. I can tell you how he has favored me in the most dimmest situation. I can tell you about the successes and prosperity because I have chosen and selected to view my problem through God's eyes. Yes. Ooh. Hallelujah. Um, this is your ticket. I'm giving you some revelation. This is yes. your ticket to the promised yes. land of your own yes. personal success. You must discern yes. the Joshua and Caleb nearest you. Find the faith food. Find the yes. faith yes. food. Begin yes. speaking aloud what you desire, not what you dread. That's why God had me tell you begin to decree. You didn't understand it, but I was setting you up for prosperity. I was setting you up for a hallelujah success. You've got to begin to and declare in your atmosphere. Speak your expectations, not your fears. I'll repeat that. Somebody got to know this. This is going to help someone. Speak your expectations, not your fears. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. This is another Thank one. You, Jesus. Nurture your faith talk. Say what God wants to hear. Your words affect God. Hallelujah. Your prayers ignite God. Faith talk is what God responds to favorably. How do you think God responds to you? If you, oh, God, I got this before me. Oh, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it work. Oh, God. You spend 30 minutes doing that type of talking with God when you can spend literally just a few minutes coming mm-hmm. before him, giving him yeah. nourishing faith talk. God, even though all of this is before me, I know that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my oh, provider. Yeah. I know you told yeah. me you would do exceedingly abundantly above yeah. all that I could ever ask or think. You told me you've given me the power to obtain wealth. You told me, Deuteronomy 28 yeah. and 2, that the blessings of the Lord should overtake. See, yeah. I know this, that you can't even decree effectively because you don't even know the word. Yeah. Woo! Um, Hello? This Hello, is, somebody. Hello, Tessin. One, two, three. Tessin. Thank you. Now, <laughs> this yeah, is what I'm, I'm so telling you. Opposite. You can't even decree and declare because you have nothing inside of you that is worth down. decreeing. My you Lord. have nothing inside of you that you, because yeah, when you decree, now. you use God's word. Yeah. His word yeah. is a de- declaration. His yeah. word is everlasting. But if you don't have no everlasting in, inside of you, all you got to say is, okay, Lord, I, I just, uh, uh, well, I just, I believe it's going to happen. Amen. Now, that's weak. Even a king can't speak like that. And we are sons of God. We are kings of God. You have to decree and declare like a king right would. Even ladies, he uses masculine terms. How would a king speak? Yeah. How would a king decree? you got to use your imagination. Amen. Go all the way back to those years of watching Sesame Street. Tap into your imagination. Decree and declare like you're a king with a scepter and a robe and a crown. Yes, God. Yes. Amen. That's why the Bible says when we meet Jesus, we shall lay down our crowns. You don't get a crown just only when you're in heaven. Come on you now. You got a crown right on Thank earth. You, Come on now. Good Jesus. Oh, I'm saying something good. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I'm getting some revelation. I'm giving some revelation. What am I saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So talk expectations, not experiences. I'll repeat that. Talk expectations, not experiences. Do not drag yesterday 
into your future. Amen. Remember Amen. The there. Jesus. Remember Thank the ten Jesus. spies. The ten spies tried to drag their slave mentality into the promised land, Don't and work. guess what? It defeated them. Yep. So you got to leave the past behind. You got to yep. nurture the photograph of possibilities within your heart. Elijah gave the widow of Zarephath a picture of her potential. It stirred her expectations. It stirred her expectations of a miracle harvest in her life. Her future was never the same. Amen. You don't know the story? Google it. The widow of Zarephath. And Amen. read it. Refuse the role of a victim. This is a big one because we love to be the victim. Refuse the role of a victim. See yourself as a victor. The Bible says you are. It says we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8, 37. Write it down. Romans 8, 37. Study it. Hide it in your heart. If you hide it in your heart, it won't sin against God. That's Amen. what my Bible tells me in Psalms 119. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So put it in your heart. Commit it to memory because the enemy will make you forget who you are. The enemy is so good at crafting his illusions, you will forget that you are more than a conqueror. You will actually forget that God is working on your behalf because he will try and make you so drowned in your trials and tribulations, you'll feel like you're by yourself. I can't tell you how many people we speak to and they cry. They just break down because we told them God said that he's with you. Oh, my God. I just... I sometimes wonder if God even sees me. Boy. And it makes my heart break because the enemy is so successful at getting the people to forget that God is omnipresent. Amen. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to commit the scripture heart. So in the times where you feel like you are alone, you may not get to talk to General April. You may not get to talk to General Andrew. You may not have anybody, a prayer partner. you got to remember yes. that God is with you. Amen. Greater is he Preach. Amen. that is in you Amen. than he that is in the world. Come on, Apostle. Yes. Amen. Yes. Too many. Too many embrace the victim mentality. They adopt the victim vocabulary. I do not have enough education. I was abused as a child. We were always poor. you got to reject this kind of thinking. You have to renounce it. You really do. You have to receive. You have the anointing of God wrapped around you when you said, Lord, I repent and I confess with my heart that you are my Lord. Wash away my sins when you enter into your inheritance and he became your God. All of that what you used to have when you didn't have enough education. You was abused as a child. We were always poor. You now stepped into a new lineage. And Amen. I don't know there about and you, you spoke it. When Amen. You start professing, when you start professing, and it's almost like a decree, when you start decreeing we were always poor, you are separating yourself from the lineage of God because God is saying, first of you're not going to lie on me. I was never poor. Yes. Amen. I was never abused as a child. So I don't know who you're talking about because you are now my child, and that is not my lineage. Yes. And now mm, I know the Bible says, some of you say, you say but, but he said that he became poor. No, no. See, if you know the scripture, he became poor by the heaven standard. That's See, right. he left streets filled with gold. He left grasses with M's and emeralds and gems all on the ground. He left a, a dynamic place that we can't even, even with our imagination be able to conjure up. He left a sea of crystals. So to leave all of that and come down to earth, of course you're going to be poor. <laughs> by heaven standard. But even when Jesus was on earth, he was never poor by man standard. Because a poor man doesn't need a treasurer. Come on. And he had a treasurer being with him everywhere he goes. 
Thank you for so your even if you are part, you can't even claim that you were poor. You can't even you can't even bring yesteryears. You build your strength off of how you survived and overcame it. But now you are in a new lineage, and now you call forth Deuteronomy twenty eight and two. How the blessings of the Lord overtake you. This is when you decree and declare in Philippians, the fourth chapter, how God is supplying all your needs. Yes. All your needs in glory by Christ Jesus. So when you tell me that you are poor and you don't have enough, then you immediately are disowning your inheritance that that is owed unto you by Christ. Amen. Ooh, I know this is something you probably never even heard before. This is like, oh, Apostle April, General April, you are blowing my mind on today. Amen. This is something new. Amen. No one has ever taught me this. No Amen. one has ever empowered me like this. No one has ever taken the time to change my mindset. They, thought, they always Amen. told me to keep praying, keep praying. Yeah, but after you keep praying, what do you do with your behavior? How is your conduct? How do you feel about yourself? Because how you feel about yourself will always dictate your conduct. Woo! Hey, buddy. Thank you. Woo, you are not a captive. You are a conqueror. See yourself as successful. Replay the successes in your mind. Yeah. Think about your past battles and struggles. David remembered and replayed his victories over the lion and the, in his mind. These images gave him the confidence to run toward Goliath instead of away from him. He saw himself as a winner in the past, and so it was easy to see himself as a winner in the future. Yeah. Yesterday is your history of successes. Hallelujah. Yesterday is your history of, of successes. Remember them. Talk about them. Make it a point to express gratitude. Others need to hear yes. you rejoice in your victories. Yes. Why do you think we're so avid on your testimonies? But we have thousands of screenshots of people. That's a victory. When someone says, Hallelujah. being connected to your ministry, my yeah. prayer life has gotten stronger. Woohoo! Victory. Because I'm connected to your teaching, I have maintained holiness and righteousness and celibacy. Woohoo! Victory. Because I've been connected to your ministry, I don't smoke and drink the way I used to. Woohoo! Victory. Because of you, I have started tithing. And I have seen yes, promotion God. on my job, and I've seen debt yes, cancellation. God. Woohoo! Victory! Yes, God. Amen. We have thousands of those testimonies. That's why we rehearse it before the people to build your confidence. Thank to you. build your confidence. These images they gave and will give you confidence to run toward your Goliath instead of away from it. You got to remember them. You got to talk about yeah. them. Make it a point to express yeah. gratitude. Thank the Bible you. says in Psalms 126, 2 through 3, Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they, The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. When you begin to rehearse your victories, your successes, you're giving God the praise. Yeah. Amen. And guess what comes with that? Joy, laughter, peace. I tell some people the reason why you're so angry and almost looking like you constipated is because you don't rehearse the victories of God. You don't give God enough praise. Don't you know there's an exchange? You can swap out your anger for laughter. Amen. You do not make yourself look unattractive. Then you wonder why you don't have a husband. Thank you, Jesus. Newsflash, ladies, no man wants a woman that looks like she's constipated. No man wants a woman who looks like she can't smell, and if she did, it would crack her face. Come on, Apostle. Can I just tell you the truth? My husband fell in love with me because I had a smile. I had joy. It wasn't nothing fake or phony. I had joy. The joy of the Lord truly is my strength. I laugh. My laughter, my sense of humor is what turns my husband on. That's right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. We tell you the real. It wasn't because I was quoting a scripture and because I was sold out to the Lord. Yeah, that was part of it. But he has natural attractions as well. He said, man, this woman is funny. I love it. I want to marry her. Matter of fact, before he even knew my name, he asked me, are you married? 
He Amen. knew what he wanted, and he got Amen. it. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. Yes. Rehearse the victories of God. Well, Rehearse. Rehearse what God is saying. Rehearse what God is doing in your life, and you will be filled with laughter. Thankfulness produces joy. You mean people on here? Thankfulness produces joy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Let you. this be a lesson. If you meet people that are mean, you can immediately begin to minister to them about thankfulness. Because there's a lack of joy, which means there's a lack of thankfulness. Right. Thankfulness is the yes. seed for the harvest of joy. Yes. Somebody got to write that down. This is Hallelujah. good. That's a nugget. Thankfulness is the seed that produces joy. Savor God's uh, everyday blessings, your eyesight, your hearing, your ability to speak, the thousands of other things to be happy for. Celebrate yourself and your self-portrait. Stop looking in a mirror at everything that you hate. Start looking in a mirror and tell yourself what you love. The Lord just told me that. You look in a mirror and all you do is curse your own self. Oh, I hate my belly. I don't even look at myself. I don't. No, God is saying get naked, get in the mirror, and start saying how you love your complexion, how you love your shape, how you love your height. Start telling yourself what you love about yourself because it always begins with you. Amen. If you don't feel confident about you, how do you think your husband's going to feel confident about you? It is not his job to be your father. It is not his job to be your confidence builder. It is you. Yes. Yes. Man of God, it is not your wife to make you feel like that you are Denzel Washington. You better believe you look like who you want and that you love who you are before she even comes in your life. Because then it begins to become a burden. She can't even do anything else or talk about anything else. And every time you go out and there's another man that you think looks better than you, you're going to be looking crazy. Well, what you looking at him for? <laughs> I saw you looking at him. What, what, you like his, oh, oh, you like his height? You like his, his bill while he buffered in me? <laughs> you start creating all types of arguments over petty stuff because you don't celebrate yourself. Celebrate your intellect. Celebrate your heritage. I know some people, they don't even like to be the race that they are. I said, now, how stupid is that? Amen there. Yeah. There is nothing you can do to change that. So now you're going to go through your whole life hating that you're the ethnicity that you are. How dumb is that? But this is how the enemy begins to bamboozle our mind. And yep. we start fighting a battle that doesn't even need to be fought. You got so many other things to be thanking God for, but you stuck on, I hate that I'm this FC. That race, I always love that race. They're so cool. Who cares? Make your own life cool. That's right. Yeah. I'm on, woman own, of God. Yeah. Adapt your own culture. Man. Don't become the stereotype. Man. I know that I'm an African American, but let me tell you something. I'm not the stereotypical African American. Okay. We are multicultural over here. That's right. We are Indian, we are Caucasian, yes. we are Indonesian, we are everything over here, yes. and we, we yes. love it. Yes. We indulge yes. all cultures. Yes. We, we're Irish. My husband is part Irish. Grandfather is Irish, full-blooded. I mean, it's all in us, and we endorse all ethnicities, all of their culture. Amen, all I of do their, too. We love it. Amen. We love yes. people. Because the moment yes. you start getting hinged on just your race, your race is the moment you actually, yes. God can't use you in diversification. So yes. we open up our minds to receive. Celebrate yourself. We celebrate that about ourselves. We celebrate our ability to adapt to other cultures. We celebrate our IQ. We're not Einsteins over here, but we thank God for the little limited intellect we do have. We celebrate our laughter. We celebrate our humor. Just because we woke up this morning, we give each other a high five and say, let's go and celebrate. We really do. We really do. Hallelujah. We have a successful night. We look at the clock. We say, man, Magic Kingdom doesn't close to midnight. Let's go and walk around Magic Kingdom. Let's just celebrate how we just had a successful, we did five prophetic coaching calls. High five. Let's go. We be celebrating life here. We really do. Take a walk around the park. Treat yourself to a 99-cent ice cream cone. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Do it. Buy a scarf. Whatever is like, whatever floats your boat, but celebrate yourself. 
We know this word has truly empowered you for this week. And if you want to activate this word and manifest this word into your life, visit our website and sow into it. The website is www.kci.world. That's www.kci.world, not .com, not .org, for we are worldwide where there is always something supernaturally happening. That is www.kci.world. As always, we are speaking life over you, and we are excited about your now, your next, and your new season in Jesus' name. This has been your weekly supernatural word of empowerment from the generals.